morning. Thank you all for joining us today as we announce an indictment charging seven Russian military officers with violations of several U.S. criminal laws for malicious cyber activities against the United States and its allies. I'm joined today by the U.S. Attorney for the Western District of Pennsylvania, Scott Brady, the FBI's Deputy Assistant Director for Cyber, Eric Welling, and Director General of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, Mark Flynn. A short while ago, the Dutch Minister of Defense and the United Kingdom's National Security Advisor held a joint press conference announcing a recent intelligence operation against several Russian agents conducting a clandestine mission in The Hague. The joint UK-Dutch intelligence operation led to four Russian GRU officers being caught red-handed while they attempted to breach the cybersecurity of the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. <clears throat> this GRU target and an additional laboratory in Switzerland that was their next target were analyzing the deadly Russian nerve agent recovered in the UK following an assassination attempt, as well as other chemical agents that were used in Syria against innocent civilians. The Prime Ministers of the Netherlands and the United Kingdom issued a joint statement condemning the Russian behavior. We are including a copy of their statements and the materials provided to all of you in this room and online at justice.gov. Our indictment today charges some of the same Russian operatives caught in The Hague, along with their colleagues in Moscow, as part of a conspiracy to hack a variety of individuals and organizations in the United States, Canada, and Europe to obtain information or access that was then exploited for the benefit of the Russian government. More specifically, this indictment alleges a conspiracy to use computer hacking to obtain non-public personal health information about athletes and others in the files of anti-doping agencies and sporting federations in multiple countries, and to release that stolen information selectively and sometimes misleadingly. All of this was done to undermine those organizations' efforts to ensure the integrity of the Olympic and other games. Other targets of this conspiracy were the Chemical Weapons Laboratory in The Hague and a nuclear power company here in America. Three of the seven defendants charged in this case were previously charged in the indictment brought by the Office of Special Counsel in July of this year, which pertained to a conspiracy to interfere with the 2016 U.S. presidential election. The current indictment does not rise out of the work of the Special Counsel. Nonetheless, these two indictments charge overlapping groups of conspirators, and they evince some of the same methods of computer intrusion and the same overarching Russian strategic goal, to pursue its interests through illegal influence and disinformation operations aimed at muddying or altering perceptions of the truth. The crux of this indictment, which U.S. Attorney Scott Brady will describe in more detail, is the GRU's targeting of the World Anti-Doping Agency the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency, and the Canadian Centre for Ethics and Sport, which is Canada's anti-doping body. The GRU did so in response to the efforts of anti-doping officials' exposure of Russia's systematic and state-backed athlete doping program. Embarrassed by that truth, Russia fought back by retaliating against the truth-tellers and against the truth itself. The results of Russia's hacks, however, weren't just felt by the anti-doping officials or their agencies. Instead, Russia decided that it was fair game to flood the social and traditional media with the private medical information of more than 250 athletes from 30 countries in a manner that often inaccurately reflected or otherwise omitted the true nature, purpose, and context of the information. I hope that through today's charges, which fall far from the electoral arena of our prior charges, we can further educate ourselves as to the scope of the Russian government's disinformation and influence campaigns. I also hope that responsible members of the international news media will cast a suspecting eye on future hack and leak operations, which seek in part to manipulate stories in furtherance of Russian state interests. It is evident from the allegations in today's indictment that the defendants believe that they could use their anonymity to act with impunity in their own countries and on the territories of other sovereign nations, to undermine international institutions and to distract from their government's own wrongdoing. 
they were wrong. Working together with our partners and nations that share our values, we can expose the truth for the world to see. Nations like Russia and others that engage in malicious and norm-shattering cyber and influence activities should understand the continuing and steadfast resolve of the United States and its allies to prevent, disrupt, and deter such unacceptable conduct. The defendants in this case should know that justice is patient, its reach is long, and its memory is longer. Before I turn it over to the U.S. Attorney to discuss the charges in greater detail, I'd like to extend my gratitude to the prosecutors in his office <clears throat> here in the National Security Division, as well as the team of FBI investigators, the Royal Canadian Mountain Police, and our international partners in the Netherlands, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom, who are together responsible for where we are today. Thank you. Thank you, John. Good morning. I'm Scott Brady. I'm the United States Attorney for the Western District of Pennsylvania. Today, through our indictment of seven officers of the Russian Intelligence Directorate, we are fighting back to protect U.S. citizens and organizations from criminal cyber attacks funded by the Russian government. These seven defendants are charged with a pervasive campaign of hacking, stealing private and sensitive information, and publicizing that information to retaliate against Russia's detractors and sway public opinion in Russia's favor. Along with our international partners, we're shining a light on these criminals and are one step closer to bringing justice to the victims of these malicious attacks. There were hundreds of victims targeted by these Russian criminals. The defendants targeted athletes and anti-doping agencies as retaliation for the outing of Russia's state-sponsored athlete doping program. As John said, the victims included approximately 250 athletes from 30 countries, as well as U.S. and international anti-doping agencies such as WADA, USADA, CSIS, the Court of Arbitration for Sport, the International Association of Athletics Federation, FIFA, and as many as 35 other anti-doping or sporting federations. But these bad actors carried out retaliatory attacks to further other Russian interests as well. They targeted Westinghouse, a nuclear power company based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, that supplied nuclear fuel to the Ukraine. They targeted the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, which was investigating the use of chemical weapons in Syria and the poisoning of a former GRU officer and his daughter in the UK. And they targeted a lab in Switzerland that analyzed the nerve agent used in that poisoning. Let me talk briefly about the charges in the indictment for a moment. The defendants are charged with engaging in a lengthy and wide-ranging conspiracy to hack into private computers and networks around the world. The victims of this illegal activity are anti-doping organizations in the United States and abroad, Swiss and Dutch entities which investigate the use of chemical weapons, and as I mentioned, an important company in my own district, Westinghouse. Federal law makes it illegal to use hacking techniques such as spear phishing to gain access to protected computers and networks. These illegal actions also provided the basis for the wire fraud conspiracy count. Five of the defendants were charged with aggravated identity theft. That means they illegally obtained identifying information, including passwords used by real persons and exploited it to further their hacking activity. Defendant Yermakov is charged with four counts of wire fraud. He is alleged to have spent, sent spear phishing emails to specific employees of Westinghouse in an effort to trick them into providing their login credentials, which would enable him to gain access to their personal email accounts and ultimately Westinghouse's network. Finally, all defendants are charged with illegal money laundering which in this case means that they use cryptocurrencies, such as Bitcoin, to purchase the infrastructure to further their conspiracy, such as servers, to register domains, to pay vendors, and to buy other hacking tools. And the financial transactions occurred, at least in part, in the United States. I want to talk about two things uh, generally. The how of this conspiracy is fascinating. Our ability to identify operational practices was critical in our ability to identify the defendants and to bring the charges today. And the indictment lays these practices out in detail. The MO of the GRU cyber units, 
the use of spear phishing campaigns, the use of DDoS attacks, the deployment and command and control of malware in networks, the creation of spoof domains, the use of cryptocurrency to mask sources, the creation of a false hacktivist profile, Fancy Bear, to publish stolen data, and the role of on-site or close access teams to hack hotel Wi-Fi and steal officials' network access information. But it's important that the why not get lost in this. This began with the disclosure of Russian state-sponsored doping program for its athletes. In other words, Russia cheated. They cheated, they got caught, they were banned from the Olympics, they were mad, and they retaliated. And in retaliating, they broke the law. So they are criminals. I want to say a word about victims in this case as well. You know, in the midst of discussions of international standards and national strategic interests, it's important to remember that these defendants engaged in criminal activi activity in violation of the laws of the United States, which harmed United States citizens. This is not spy versus spy. These were not passive intelligence gathering operations. This is a criminal conspiracy which caused real harm to real victims. When the GRU targets American corporations to, tra to steal trade secrets and technology, it costs American companies billions of dollars in lost R&D and capital investment. And there's a real cost to American workers, many of whom may lose their jobs as com companies' production or sales suffer. When the GRU publishes US athletes' most private and sensitive medical information to embarrass our national sports federations, we are all made more vulnerable. No American citizen, let alone our most accomplished athletes, which represent the United States in world competition, should have to endure this. And when the GRU hacks anti-proliferation organizations and labs which test for the use of chemical weapons for their own parochial interests or advantage, we are all made less safe. We at the Department of Justice are not satisfied with merely exposing the conduct that's the subject of this investigation. Our goal in this case is the same as in every case that we charge. We seek to arrest those who have broken the law. In this case, we want to bring them to Pittsburgh. We want them to stand trial, and we want to put them in jail. These defendants must be held accountable for their crimes. That's our goal. That's what our victims deserve, and that's what justice requires. We'll now hear from Eric Welling, FBI's Deputy Assistant Director for Cyber. Good morning, everyone. Uh, again, I'm Eric Welling, Deputy Assistant Director for Cyber um, on behalf of the FBI. Um, and I'd like to just make a few comments to echo uh, the sentiments of my colleagues. Uh, the FBI is charged with defending the United States against a full range of cyber crimes. We face cyber threats from hackers for hire and illicit cyber enterprises. We also face threats from nation states as we see in the indictments announced today. The seven individuals indicted are all officers in the Russian GRU. Um, the FBI investigation revealed from late 2014 through May 2018, the GRU conducted computer hacking activities to retaliate against uh, world anti-doping officials who publicly exposed Russian government sponsorship of doping by Russian athletes. Their campaign was undertaken to internationally, intentionally damage world organizations and athletes committed to fairness. They infiltrated networks and computers of domestic and international anti-doping agencies, anti-doping officials, sporting federations, and hundreds of clean international athletes from almost 30 countries. Their targets extended beyond anti-doping and sporting associations. Notably, they also targeted the organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons, among others. In situations where the GRU officers could not remotely hack into their targeted systems, they travel using Russian government-issued passports to locations around the world to conduct close access hacking operations. You'll see some photos um, here, um, and I think we have some others uh, that we'll provide after the, uh, the conference, where you will see uh, the rental car used by the operatives um, outside the Organization for Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. You will see the uh, materials and gear that was uh, abandoned after the failed intelligence operation. And um, you can also then see how the, the gear was uh, uh, arranged to penetrate the Wi-Fi systems. To, and these, this equipment was also used in 
compromises on previously. The involved targeting um, of the Wi-Fi networks was uh, used by victim organizations or personnel in various locations, including Switzerland, the Netherlands, and Brazil. The GRU used unauthorized access and stolen information to obtain, to obtain through their hacking efforts to for the street for the strategic benefit of the Russian Federation, and they engaged in a campaign of influence and disinformation to advance the interests of the Russian government. Specifically, they worked to undermine and destabilize the efforts of the international doping officials, publicize and expose sensitive medical information and drug testing results belonging to athletes, and damage the reputations of clean athletes around the world by peddling a false narrative suggesting such athletes were using banned or performance enhancing drugs. The GRU officers, publicly released stolen private information online, hiding behind the name of the Fancy Bear Hanking Team. These activities by Russian GRU officers move well beyond acceptable government intelligence operations. The GRU is breaking traditional international norms and the law in using cyber tools and resources in the fashion that they have. The FBI considers any criminal activity conducted by nation state actors, especially those leading to the violations of Americans' privacy, or interference in our economy to be a matter of national security. These GRU officers broke US law by hacking into US infrastructure and victimizing US citizens. Victims targeted by nation state hackers should not have to face the threat alone. And this indictment is an important step in standing with and seeking justice for the victims in this criminal activity. We fully identify these conspirators. We can show who they are. We can provide detailed information and evidence of their affiliation with the Russian government. The charges reinforce this behavior is not acceptable and violates international norms as well as U.S. criminal laws. These charges further lay out for the international community some of the basis for the U.S. government's prior assertions that the Russian government was responsible for other cyber intrusions and attacks. This indictment serves as a reminder the FBI does not tolerate criminal activity, even those conducted at the behest of nation states. We believe the GRU officers named in this indictment are located in Russia and not immediately available to answer the charges. Still, people travel, and many countries support international norms and the rule of law. We look forward to providing these subjects the opportunity to answer for these charges. We can't always apprehend subjects easily or quickly, but we'll keep at it because the FBI has a long memory and an important responsibility to the victims. We wouldn't be here today without the courage and cooperation of the victims. And we encourage all victims to report suspected intrusions to their local offices so we can raise the cost of this kind of behavior. We understand victims may be reluctant to report breaches, but we do strive to minimize the disruption to their daily activities and to safeguard their privacy. We don't want victims to feel re-victimized by the investigation. And the suffering in silence doesn't serve anyone. We want to thank our international partners. Today is a victory of cooperation and information sharing. The Royal Canadian Mountain Police for their strong support and coordination between the investigations here and there. The UK National Security Intelligence Agencies for their enduring and untiring support. The Netherlands Defense Intelligence and Security Service for their information sharing and assistance, illuminating the tactics and tradecraft of the GRU. And Switzerland's Attorney General's Office for providing key evidence and providing prompt response. We'll continue to work together to use every tool at our disposal to fight malicious cyber activities. We'll work with the diversity of thought, diversity of countries, but with a commonality of purpose to ensure the safety of our people and our networks. Thank you. Take a few questions. Sarah. Hi, Sarah Lynch, thanks for doing this. Um, I know uh, you had said that all the uh, defendants in our show have been apprehended, but do you have any reason to believe they have assets outside of Russia and the United States or other uh, European countries that uh, can be seized as a means of maybe trying to get back some some uh, money to victims and something like that? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not sure about that now, Sarah, but that brings up an excellent point, which is often one of the purpose of these charges is to provide the foundation for other parts of the government to take actions. And we've certainly seen in the past where uh, we have followed actions like this with sanctions on the defendants, on the organizations, and on other people involved. The administration has already sanctioned uh, many of the folks involved in uh, pre previous cyber activity, including some of the oligarchs who have supported it. Um, yes, Carrie Johnson from NPR. 
Look, I think uh, the indictment lays out, you know, it, everything that it lays out in terms of the involvement of uh, Fancy Bear, in terms of the involvement of the Russian government. These are uh, Russian uh, military officers. Um, I think if we could uh, get our hands on these folks one day, we would have no problem bringing them to justice. So I'm saying that, the, that when people question whether what you're saying about the connection to Russia is true, when people claim that, does that impact your ability to do that? As I said, I, if we get our hands on them, we're not going to have any problems. Betsy? Yeah, three of the GRU officials indicted in here have previously been indicted by Special Counsel Mueller's team. Did you guys coordinate or work with or glean any information in this indictment from the Special Counsel? This investigation is um, in, entirely separate from the work of the Special Counsel's office. But did you coordinate with them before you released this indictment? Was there any communication between this investigation and the Special Counsel's office? I'm not going to comment on any uh, discussion, internal sort of Justice Department discussions. Time for one more question. Paul? Uh, for U.S. Attorney Brady, uh, the Western District of Pennsylvania, for whatever reason, often seems to be involved in these uh, cases, charging uh, folks tackling on foreign governments, uh, previously for IP, here for, for this. Is there anything you guys have seen that actually works? Because as you know, name and shame, not everyone believes that this is an effective deterrent. Is there anything you guys have done or seen that actually works to deter well, to answer the first part of your question, the reason that they come in Pittsburgh is because we have the best agents and the best prosecutors <laughs> in the Department of Justice. Uh, I, would, I would take issue with the premise of your question that name and shame doesn't work. There is deterrent value, even if we can't put our hands on the defendants at this time. I mean, number one, they're limited from traveling because they know if they travel in countries with which we have extradition, that they will be sent to the United States and they will uh, be held accountable. But we have seen in our cases, which you reference, uh, the Wang Dong case, uh, the, the prosecution of five members of the PLA in 2014, and the Boisset case in 2017. Uh, we have seen a change uh, in, at least for China in those cases, their corporate espionage practices, and those were a part of bilateral discussions between the President and the State Department. So we, we believe that they are effective. And even if one takes issue with that, it's important that the victims of these crimes understand that we are behind them and that we are going to, to hold people accountable publicly for those crimes. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank you.